Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is Friday, January 8th, and our devotion for this day comes from Malachi chapter 1. Uh, Malachi is the last of the 12 minor prophets in the Old Testament, and so in your version of the Bible, it is the last book in the Old Testament. I'm not going to read all of Malachi chapter 1 aloud over this video, so I would encourage you uh, to pause this video, take some time to read Malachi chapter 1 on your own, and then return for our discussion. Now one thing to note about Malachi is that his name means my messenger. Now we do believe that Malachi actually was his name though. He's writing sometime in the 400s BC, and we know that for a couple reasons. One is that he mentions in chapter 1, verse 8, uh, a governor, and a governor was not part of the governing system in, in the days of the kings or the judges. So this is a later development after the exile to Babylon and the, the return to Judah under Persian rule. So a governor would have been part of the Persian Empire. We also know from later in verse 10 of chapter 1, there is a reference to the altar. Apparently the temple has been rebuilt, so we're dealing with a time during the Persian Empire after the completion of the temple, and worship and sacrificial practices have lagged behind. The people's heart is not in their worship and their right sacrifice uh, to God. And this is why Malachi is given this word of prophecy from the Lord to declare and then later to be written down as well. One thing that Malachi uses at God's behest is rhetorical questions. Uh, this is not a very long book, and yet there are 22 rhetorical questions here, including a few in chapter 1. This starts off right away in, in verse 2. I, I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? Is not Esau Jacob's brother? He continues later, if I am a master, where is my fear? If I am a father, where is my honor? God is trying to get the people to think about the ways they have not given God what he is owed. And he does this by employing rhetorical questions that lead them to think of their sin. We also have a very sharp statement here in verses 3 and 4. Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Uh, this is a very... Uh, serious statement coming uh, from God through uh, the prophet Malachi. How ought we to interpret this statement? Well, one way we need to interpret this is that God has always been in the business of electing. This does not mean that God casts some people aside and, and does not desire a relationship with them, but God still consecrates certain people, sets aside certain people and certain groups of people for his purposes. This is what God did to fulfill the promise to Abraham through the line of Jacob, the younger brother, and not Esau. And yet later on, we do have God clearly saying here that he desires and indeed all nations will come before him. And so this is not a statement from God that he has cast Esau off never to be redeemed. Christ will come and he will die for all people. And yet, in the process, God does choose to work through some and not others. Another thing to notice here in Malachi chapter 1 comes in verse 10. Oh, that there were one among you who would shut the doors that you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. Worship practices within the temple, the, the, the priesthood has become polluted in a sense. They're not offering pure offerings. The Lord uh, confronts uh, the people here about how they are bringing uh, weak or uh, different sorts of animals that were different from the first fruits. God has owed the first fruits of the flocks and the first fruits of, of the fruits of, of the people. And instead the people were, were bringing uh, less desirable animals for sacrifices and saving the best for their own. Clearly, this is not giving God what he is due. And so this is one of the reasons why God says, your offerings are, are useless to me. I wish you would just shut, shut off the altar entirely. That would be better. It's a very harsh statement from, from God here, uh, noting the seriousness of the sins of the people. And yet God continues to reign. We see in verse 11 here this, this promise, this prophecy, that from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations. 
So this is a very loaded verse here. First, from the rising of the sun to its setting, talks about the spanning from east to west, land known and unknown. The whole world will, will come to know the great name of God. And this also clearly uh, brings the name of God beyond the Jewish people to the corners of the earth where Gentiles and people of all nations will come to know the glory and majesty of God. And certainly this is appropriate in our season of Epiphany. And so in the season of Epiphany, we also look at one of the closing verses in this chapter, Malachi 1, verse 14, the very last verse. Cursed be the cheat who has a male in his flock and vows it, and yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. Jesus is our king. God continues to reign with his son on the throne. What do we owe our king? How do we present uh, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to our God? Well, we do this with our whole heart and our whole life. We respond to the gracious sacrifice, the once for all sacrifice of Jesus on the cross with our thanks and praise, with rightly oriented hearts toward God as made possible by the Holy Spirit so that we would not withhold our best from God, but give him our all for we belong to him and he has made himself known as our King and our God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem all peoples, that from the east to the west people would know your name. Help us to treat you as our true King, even amid political turmoil in our land and all sorts of squabbles that we have in all areas of life. Help us to keep our eyes firmly fixed on you, our King, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God's peace be with you this day.